Hello, and welcome to my channel where I taste and rank different types of alcoholic beverages. Today we'll be trying 12 different types of beers, specifically stouts and porters. This tasting ranking is strictly my opinion, so there is no right or wrong answers, just where I believe, that based off the taste alone, where I'd rank these guys. With that said, let's get started. Alright, so here are the beers. So I will be starting these guys on the porters first, and then moving on to the heavier style, the stouts. Yeah, no particular order. First one today is going to be from Maui Brewing, Hawaii, Coconut Highway Porter. This guy is 6% alcohol. Again, it is a coconut porter. Uh, coconut is actually very prominent. It's actually very enjoyable. It's very easy drinking. Uh, this is actually really good. If you like coconut, again, you definitely do get a little bit of the coconut flavor, a little nuttiness as well. Overall, it's delicious. It's easy drinking. You get a lot of flavor out of it, so it's not super heavy at all. Uh, this one I would rank... Um, I, I would rank this one A. I like this a lot. Again, um, the only downfall I would say is I wish it had more coconut. But overall, it's actually really good. Everything's there that I would want in a porter. Again, and the flavors are there as well. It was good. It was delicious. So, so far, on to a good start. All right. Next, I have is Knee Deep Tanilla Porter. Knee Deep's out of uh, Northern California. 6.3% alcohol. Mm. This one's not too bad. Not great either, though. Tastes a little watered down. I get a little bit of a uh, roasted, uh, like roasted coffee flavor. Overall, it's just very light though. It's not bad, but it's just, there's not much flavor going on. Again, it's just, I feel like it's too light in flavor. Again, I could probably drink this whole can and be fine. But overall, I wish it had a little bit more flavor. But again, it wasn't bad though. So this one I rank it a C. Alright, next. I have is Beechwood Mocha Machine Imperial Coffee Chocolate Porter. Wow, quite a bit to say. Right there. 9.2% alcohol. So it's going to be a little heavier since it's a Imperial Porter. First thought already on the pour, didn't really have a lot of carbonation on it. It was uh, very light compared to the first two. So far, this does have the best nose to it, though. It smells fantastic. It smells like roasted coffees. And taste-wise, it actually tastes like coffee as well. I don't get a lot of um, chocolate, but it is, it is there, very hint sweetness. But anyone who's a coffee lover will definitely enjoy this. This is a, I get a lot of flavor of black coffee. And then again, a little sweetness from the chocolate. Overall, this was actually very, very good. This one I give an S. Again, I love the flavors on it. The coffee flavor was definitely on point. Uh, the chocolate and the sweetness of it was on point as well. It wasn't overly sweet. It, ba it balanced the, the coffee flavor. Uh, and just finishing it is very, very smooth. Uh, this guy, again, it was it was very, very delicious. Super easy to drink. Again, I wouldn't know that I'd be drinking a 9% uh, alcohol if uh, I didn't read it. 
it was uh overall just uh overall just very delicious again this one i feel like you could drink this like nothing and wouldn't even know that it was nine percent overall though it was, uh it was really good again, i definitely enjoyed this one a lot all right moving on all right next i have is second chance brewing out of san diego california this is the Tabula Rosa Porter. This is 6.2% alcohol. This one's not bad. Um, this is very similar to the Tanilla. If anything, it has a little bit more flavor. It has a more robust, like, nutty flavor. It is a little bit easier to drink. It does have a little bit of bitterness, like a, a dark, dark chocolate bitterness to it. Not sweet. Mm, not my favorite, though. Just of the style, the bitterness of it, though. Um, overall, again, it's not bad. Uh, I definitely rank it higher than the Tanula, just because it does have more flavor. But then it wasn't one of my favorite ones to drink, just because it has a little bit of bitterness in the back fall. Some people might like that because of the dark, dark chocolate flavors you usually get out of it. Again, this is like eating a 80% uh, dark chocolate type of flavor. Um, like There's like hardly any sweetness in the chocolate. That's what I feel like it's coming off of when I drink this. Again, overall, it's not that bad, but it's not great either for me. Excuse me, uh, but it's uh, not the best one that I would rank it. But definitely not worse. Alright, next I have a Smog City, California. It's their coffee porter. Ooh. Now the Beachwood, that had coffee and chocolate, so it bounced it out well. This one is just pure coffee, black coffee. Uh, it's not too much sweetness bouncing it out at all. Um, again, it's not bad, but at the same time, it's like for those who are really big coffee lovers, I think will definitely like this a lot more than, uh, more than others. But if you're not a coffee lover, then I definitely would say stay away from this. This is 6% alcohol as well. Again, it's not bad, but you definitely have to be a coffee lover to like this. I do drink black coffee, so I did, I did actually enjoy this. But because all I tasted was like a black coffee flavored, I'm going to give it a, a rank it a B. I wish it had something a little bit more to it, but it just really didn't. But people who love black coffees, I think will enjoy this one a lot. All right, the last of the porters is the Schutz Black Butte Porter out of Oregon. 5.5% alcohol. Out of all the porters, this is probably the uh, the the well, most well balanced. It has uh, some sweetness to it, some bitterness to it, uh, a very uh, nice uh, clean taste. Again, this one almost reminds me of of the knee deep Tanilla, but just a better version of it.
This one, I'm going to rank it a B just because, again, it reminds me of everything of the Tanilla, but just slightly better. Uh, but I don't think it was a A where with next to the Maui, where the Maui definitely had more flavor to it coming forward for it. So I think B sits uh, well for it. All right, moving on, we're going to go to the Stouts. So the first one is going to be East Brothers Brew Beer Co. Oatmeal Stouts out of California. Says it's an oatmeal stout. Um, very, very light though. Not too enjoyable, honestly. 5.4%. Uh, there's not a lot of flavor coming out of it. It's very, very bland. Even worse than the Tanella Porter. Again, I'm not impressed with this at all. It's uh, not that great. It has some sweetness. Um, you know, a slight bitterness to it, but nothing, nothing too heavy. Um, almost has a little tinge of citrusness to it, which is kind of weird too. Um, not my most favorite. This one, I'm going to rank it actually E. I didn't really enjoy this one at all. So, yeah, the flavor was just not on on pudding. It just wasn't there for a stout. Uh, there was just wasn't any good characteristics about this beer. Uh, again, it wasn't that great at all. So, I'll give it an E. All right, next I have is uh, Lead Dog Brewing. And this is their peanut butter stout. 6.6% alcohol. Out of Nevada. There. There's the brewery name right there. Ooh, the smell on this is fantastic. It smells like peanut butter. Hopefully it tastes like peanut butter. Mmm. Taste is spot on. <laughs> if you like peanut butter, this definitely has a peanut butter taste to it. This is very, very good, actually. Mmm. This is delicious for those who like peanut butter. If you do not like peanut butter, I do not recommend it. But for those who love peanut butter, it is fantastic. I wish I had a little bit more going on. I wish the peanut butter was more well balanced and there's a little bit of sweetness. There's not too much sweetness to it, but definitely you get a lot of nuttiness um, of it. You know, a tad bit of sweetness, a little bitterness at the end. Uh, this one I rank it A just because of that. It didn't really bring a balance everything out and all, but this was definitely delicious though. This is really, really good. I did enjoy this one a lot. Like I said, the nose just right in the spot. Once you smell it, it just smells what it, like it tastes like. That was good. All right. Next, I have is Belching Beaver, Belching Beaver, Viva La Beaver, Mexican Chocolate Peanut Butter Stout from California, San Diego. That right there. 7.5% alcohol. All right. Not as strong a smell as I feel the lead dog. Mm. Taste wise, though, it's um, it's spot on what it's what it is. It does taste like the Mexican like 
Mexican coffee chocolate, if you ever had it before, where that cinnamon sticks and spices onto it. Um, it's very similar to that, honestly. The taste is spot on to that taste. I don't get a lot of peanut butter, but the sweetness on it is perfectly matched that. It just has like that sweetness of chocolate, um, a little bit of roasted coffee, um, a little bit of spices. This is actually really good too. This is actually very, very good. I do wish it had more of a peanut butter flavor. I mean, you know, the peanut butter flavor is just very subtle, but overall though, for what it is, the nose isn't there, like you don't smell any of that, but the taste-wise, it's spot on. So this one I recommend A as well. All right, next I have is Allagash North Sky Stout, 7.5% alcohol out of Maine. Interesting. Um, there is definitely some sweetness to it. It also has a little bit of hops, hoppy flavor to it. Very light in the end, but still present where it's like, is a little bit of bitterness to it. Almost like a hoppy stout. Uh, yeah, hoppy stout. I'm, I'm a little conflicted. It's not super appealing for being what a, a stout should be. But it wasn't bad. Actually, I did enjoy it. It had some flavor to it, um, more than some of the other characters. But then, if I'm judging it based off a of stout, I don't know if I would call it a stout. I don't know if I enjoyed it as a stout. But if I'm calling it like a specialty beer, it was it was a uh, it was it was quite it was good. It wasn't bad. So for me wise, I'd rank this a C, just based off of how uh, it tastes. It it wasn't bad, but I don't think a lot of people will like this as a stout. I think if people drank this as a stout, they'd probably be a little bit disappointed. Just because there's uh, not much going on there for stout-wise. Um, you know, again, you get a little bit of some roasted taste and some multi flavors. We also get a little bit of a bitterness, like a hoppy flavor bitterness, that most people probably don't enjoy if you're trying to get away from that. All right, moving on, I have is the... Great Divide Yeti Imperial Stout out of Colorado. Is that? 9.5% alcohol. Ooh, this is definitely the heaviest one so far. And taste-wise, I could taste the booziness of it. Uh, definitely the, you, you'll know when you drink this and you put a touch in your mouth and it hits your tongue that there's alcohol in this. And it's a little bit heavier than the others. It's heavy, heavy flavors. Um, a lot of bitterness to it, which most people probably wouldn't enjoy. But if you're looking for something heavy, then this is definitely your your taste because it does have a lot of sweetness, a lot of maltiness to it, a lot of roasted nuts, roasted coffee. Again, it wasn't bad, but I don't think a lot of people would enjoy this. For me wise, it was okay. I'd rank this one a C. Just because, uh, again, other people I don't think will like this just because of how the flavor comes out, out pretty strong. Uh, but it was good. It was enjoyable for me wise. I, again, I definitely would drink, continue to drink this. But for most, I th don't think that you guys will like this at all. Unless you guys like heavy, heavy styles. Well, like if you guys like the heavy style, then this is definitely would work for you. But for those lighter, lighter, easier drinking ones, definitely not light at all. All right, last is New Holland Dragon's Milk White Bourbon Barrel Aged Stout. So this is supposed to be a white clear stout. So let's see how it pours. And again, this should pour clear. 
if it's a white stout. So we'll see what it looks like. Ooh, and true to its name, it pours out clear. But it tastes like a stout. So what makes a white stout? Basically, uh, they don't roast the uh, the malts, so the malts are unroasted. But it tastes like a stout, pretty much. So that usually just leaves things a little bit um, confusing in most people's head when they drink this, because they think it's going to be like a hoppy, uh, you know, beer, but it tends up to be like a little bit sweeter. You know, just unroasting it just basically brings out less of the dark roasted style, but you know, just makes more a little bit of sweetness to it. For this, honestly, I thought it was going to have a little more flavor because it's bourbon barrel aged. But honestly, it's just uh, very easy drinking. It's very smooth. I don't hate it, but I wish it had more flavor because it's called a bourbon barrel aged stout. But it's just not there. I mean, I don't get any flavor on it. And it's only 6% alcohol as well for being a bourbon barrel aged stout. I feel like most bourbon, bourbon barrel aged stouts should be higher than that. So for this one, I'm going to rank it a C, just because I wish it was had a little bit more. Again, it wasn't bad. It was easy drinking, but it was not, it was not a lot of tons of flavor on it. All right, guys, this is my list. What do you guys think? Have you guys have any of these beers? Where do you, where would you guys would rank these guys if you guys have had these? Is there anything you guys would like me to try? Let me know. Leave a comment. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Cheers.